English Standard Version, which we, we have kept in the pews, you will find outdo one another in showing honor. Outdo one another in verse 10. Outdo one another in showing honor. I, I wanted the portion 9 to 13 to be read. You know why? Because we cannot separate verse 9 from verse 10, I thought, while reading the passage. And even in your Bibles, you will find ninth verse as a different topic, marks of the two Christian. And 9 to 13 is a paragraph. So, we must begin with ninth verse, and we cannot separate ninth verse or tenth verse from ninth verse. What does the ninth verse say? You will find Paul lays down the condition. First, the condition. Let me explain verse 9. Let your love be genuine. Genuine love. Or sincere love. Then comes it's a positive command. Let your love be genuine. And then comes the negative prohibition. What is the negative prohibition? Abhor what is evil. Or in New Revised Standard Version and as in NIV, you will find the next prohibition, prohibitory order is do not hate evil or abhor evil. Hate evil or abhor evil. That is the next prohibition. And then again, positive command. Do what is good. Hold fast to what is good. Hold fast to what is good. So, a positive command, then a negative prohibition, and another positive command in ninth verse. Are you able to see? Positive command is, first, let your love be sincere. In other translation. So, our love must be sincere. It must be genuine, which means love others sincerely without any hypocrisy. Love others sincerely without any hypocrisy. Do not pretend or play act. Or love others with some ulterior motive when you deal with others. So, a believer must show love, must express love not to gain, to get something personally, not for personal gain, not to get some position, not to carry some favor, or quote some favor, and so on. How many of us can truly say we love others without any ulterior motive, without expecting anything? Many a time, we are not able to love others genuinely, sincerely. So during the time of Lent, this topic is given so that we may examine ourselves whether we love others genuinely. So let us not have any ulterior motive or hidden agenda. In other words, don't have hidden agenda in loving others, in expressing your love to others. Don't love others with some wrong in expectation. And what is the next condition? Hate evil or abhor evil. That is the next prohibitory order. It is not a positive command, it is a prohibitory. You must hate what is evil. Because evil, evil is not only against God's will. It is not consistent with God's plan for my life and your life. And it destroys, evil destroys human relationship. And finally, it destroys our life also. It destroys not only human relationship, it destroys our life also. And therefore, abhor evil or hate evil. That's what Paul writes in this passage. The term hate used in the Greek language, the original language, is a strong word. To despise with intense feeling. It's not saying, I hate it. That's all. No. It's a strong word to 
despise something with intense feeling to look upon with horror that there is some danger and you don't want that to come near to you so we all know in the book of job chapter 28 verse 28 in the book of job chapter 28 verse 28 the fear of the lord that is wisdom wisdom is defined as fear of the lord and then to shun evil is understanding writes job in 28 chapter 28 verse to shun evil is understanding so it is the negative prohibition first let your love be genuine there should be no hypocrisy pretension or play act secondly a negative command hate what is evil thirdly again a positive command what is the positive command cling to what is good or in other translation hold fast to what is good in this positive command we find that we must hold on to cling to what is morally proper spiritually correct and what is fair and just what is morally proper spiritually correct and what is fair and just ethically so in other words paul says cling to hold on to the morally right thing spiritually fair thing and ethically just in all your dealings morally right spiritually fair and ethically right in all your dealings and how do we know according to god standard laid down in the bible according to the standard laid down by god himself in the law book that is bible bible has been given to us that is the law book for christians and therefore according to the bible the law book of christians we must do what is right what is fair what is just so bible gives the standard therefore the negative the positive command negative prohibition and then comes the positive command then in verse 10 love one another with brotherly affection again paul this is the key verse that is given for our meditation today verse 10 outdo one another in showing honor according to the esv bible that we use and what do we find honor one another above yourself honor one another above yourself that is an exhortation no doubt if you read verse 10 to 13 the passage the whole passage then you will find that paul writes about the true expression of your love what are the tr- expressions of your true love it must be sincere genuine that's what how we begins and therefore the expressions of your true sincere love it mentions eight things i am not going to deal with eight thing i am only going to confine with verse 10 only because that is the key verse for our meditation this evening in verse 10 exhortation what is the exhortation of paul first he says love one another with brotherly affection love one another with brotherly affection and but the meditation for our meditation that is given in our the lenten program honor one another above yourself in our bible we find outdo one another in showing honor outdo one another in showing honor so we must be devoted to one another in brotherly love that does not mean sisterly love both brotherly love as well as sisterly love okay so devote be devoted to one another and then honor one another more than yourself more than yourself listen to what paul writes in first corinthians chapter 10 verse 24 let me read to you from first corinthians chapter 10 verse 24 where paul writes how you should behave he says <coughs>
24 let no one seek his own good but the good of his neighbor let no one seek his own good how many of us seek our own good our own self projection we are more interested in self projection self promotion but here paul writes let no one seek his own good but the good of his neighbor and turn with me definitely you should turn with me or listen attentively when i read from paul's letter to philippians chapter 2 paul's letter to philippians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 verses 3 and 4 what do you find there do nothing from rivalry or conceit but in humility count others more significant than yourself more significant than yourselves count others how difficult it is how many of us are ready to do that let each of you look not only to his own interest but also to the interest of others let each of you look not only to his own interest but also to the interest of others how many times we are self-centered we look after our own interests and we are not worried bothered about the interest of others isn't that true so during this lenten season we are called to examine ourselves whether we honor one another we honor other people more than what we do to ourselves we respect other people more than we respect ourselves that is the question that we need to raise and to honor someone is to value that person respect that person value that person and respect that person that is honor so paul advises each and every one of us to give respect and affirmation respect and affirmation to others rather than seeking respect and affirmation for our own selves we want recognition we want affirmation we want to be respected wherever we go whereas we fail sometimes to respect others and therefore length period lenten season is a time when we are called to examine ourselves in the light of the word of god because this provides the standard this provides the standard and then the third thing that i want to mention first i said the condition secondly from verse ten, 9 is the condition ne positive command negative prohibition and positive command then verse 10 exhortation our key verse for this evening meditation then in the same thing i am want to raise a question is it humanly possible is it humanly possible we are all fallen human beings we are all simple human beings how many of us can truly say no i am able to rise up to the expectation of what the word of god says here and i am living up to that can any one of us say no we have miserably failed and now paul now let us ask genuinely search ourselves sincerely examine ourselves and scrutinize all let the holy spirit scrutinize all our thoughts words and actions and say yes you have passed the test will the holy spirit say this evening no we all will fail we know that but is it possible is the question humanly possible no humanly it is not possible but the scripture also says what is humanly not possible impossible is possible with god it may not be possible with you but it is possible with god and therefore what you need to do you need to ask god i'm going to quote again a verse from same book of epistle of roman chapter 5 verse 5 roman chapter 5 verse 5 where paul says the love of god has been shed abroad into our hearts by the holy spirit the love of god has been shed abroad into our hearts poured into our hearts by the holy spirit so when the love of god has been shed poured into your heart and my heart shed abroad into our hearts we have the love of god filling us and therefore we can express the love of god 
as God wants us to express. Only possibility is love of God must be poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, as Paul writes in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. So only then it is possible. So in this Lenten season, God calls you and me to examine ourselves in the light of this verse, which is given for our meditation. Particularly including verse 9. Verse 9 of Roman chapter 12, where we read, let your love be genuine. Is our love genuine? Abhor what is evil. Yes, it, it doesn't mean some of us may say, I don't eat mutton or fish during this Lenten season, so I am abhorring what is evil. That is not what Paul mentions here. Some may say, I don't use alcohol during this season of Lent, but on the 40th day, I will get full bottle. What is the use? Is it right? Is that what Paul says? No. What about what about pride? What about envy? What about selfishness? These are all sins, evil things. Therefore, during the season of Lent, can we say, I have no love for money? No. Even in the season of Lent. I have no love for any power or position. Can we say that in the season of Lent? I will say I don't eat mutton during this 40 days. Therefore, I am resisting evil, I am resisting the temptation to eat normal vegetarian food. Yes, praise God for that. But that is not what Paul means here. Remember. And therefore, beloved, we are called to examine ourselves in the light of these verses in this Lenten season and admit our failures, admit our failures, after all it, that we have not lived up to the expectation of God as given in this book, where God has laid out the standard, the Bible. And then, after admitting our failures and acknowledging that we are failed to live up to the expectation of God, then what we are expected to do? Open our hearts and ask God to fill us with His love to His Spirit. Let the love of God be poured into your hearts by the Holy Spirit. Only then we can love others as Christ loved. Only then we can forgive others as Christ has forgiven on the cross. Only then we can embrace others, even those who have hurt us, with their words, with their actions, and with their reactions. Beloved, what are we going to do? So, First, the condition in verse 9. Secondly, the exhortation in verse 10. Then, the possibility. Whether it is possible, humanly impossible. What is humanly impossible is possible with God. And therefore, Romans 5, 5, the possibility of Paul's implementing Paul's exhortation, Paul's advice, spiritual advice, by opening our hearts and asking God to fill us with love through the Holy Spirit. Shall we do that? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for speaking to us through the written word of the scripture and through the spoken word of the message. We thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes to see the condition, the exhortation, and then the possibility. Yes, Lord, humanly it is impossible because we are sinful human beings. We have deviated from the path. There is so much of trespasses and transgressions in our lives. And our lives are full of dirty things. We need to be cleansed. At least in the season of Lent, you are giving us several opportunities, daily meditation, to talk, to think about transformation. That is the theme for our Lenten season. Help us to be transformed, Lord. Send your spirit in order to cleanse us, purify us, and sanctify us. Fill our hearts with the divine love, the love of God, so that we could love others as you want us to love. Imitate your love. Express your love so that 
people who walk in darkness may see the great light of Jesus Christ in us and through us. In Jesus' name, we ask.